In this video, I'll be talking about primes. So we say an integer p greater than 1 is called a prime number if its only positive divisors are 1 and p and an integer which is strictly greater than 1 which is not a prime number is called a composite number. But here if we are looking at all divisors, so we can say that an integer a which is greater than 1 and if its divisors or if its all divisors are plus minus 1 and plus minus a. In this case, I can say that a is prime. So, in the definition, I have only considered the positive divisor. But if in general, we want to talk about all divisor, then these are the four possibility for any prime number. So, now we can see that the first few prime numbers are. So, let's write down the first few prime numbers as 2, 3, 5, 7 and so on. These are the numbers which are divisible by itself and the 1. And we can write down some of the composite numbers. So, we can start the, writing the composite number 4, 6, 8, 9, 10 and so on. And we can see that here notice that 1 which is not appearing in the prime list and 1 is also not appearing in the composite number 1. This is neither a prime, neither prime nor composite. So, 1 is not a composite number nor a prime number. So, composite numbers are those which have a proper divisor. Prime numbers are those which have uh, the divisor as this number itself. Now, let's look at the first theorem based on the prime numbers. It says that if P is prime and P divides AB, so P divides AB, then P must divide A or P must divide B. So, in the proof, what is given to us that P is prime and we have also given that P divides AB. So, now let us assume, so let's take that first condition that P divides A. So, in this case, we will not need to go further. So, we will stop. We can say that because the first condition is achieved, we want to show that P divides A or P divides B. So, if the first condition is achieved, we can stop here and we will not proceed. Now, suppose that we take now this case that P does not divide A. If P does not divide A, so in that case, then we need to show, so we need to prove that P divides B. So, this is what we need to prove in this case. Now, in this case, when I say P does not divide A, so from here, you can see that the GCD of A and P, this is equal to 1. And let's recall here the Euclid's lemma. So, in my earlier video, I have talked about the Euclid lemma. So, what is the Euclid lemma? Let me to write here again. So, Euclid lemma says that whenever A divide BC, and I'll take A and B, GCD is equal to 1. This implies A divide C. So now this Euclid lemma I'm going to apply here. So this implies because what is given to us, we have been given P divides AB. And we have derived this condition that A and P, GCD is equal to 1 because this was the case. So this means now from this Euclid lemma, we can directly say that P divides B. So by Euclid's lemma. So hence our result is proved that either P divides A, if then it's fine if not then p must divide b so from the previous theorem we can have now this first corollary if p is a prime and p divides the product of these integers a1 a2 up till a n then p divides a k for some k so where k lies between 1 and n now let us prove this by induction for n is equal to 1 this says that p divides a1 because here we'll fix the value for n so hence result is true so we, we want to prove that p must be dividing a k for some value hence this result is true and let me to assume for n is equal to k so this means p divides a1 up till a k and also note that from the previous theorem for n is equal to 2 k's hold that whenever p divides a1 a2 so this implies either p divides a1 or p divides a2 so that means P must divide some AI again in this case because here now I varies between 1 and 2 only. So that is why now I have assumed this step that for n is equal to k, suppose that the result is true. And now we want to prove for n is equal to k plus 1. So when we want to prove for n is equal to k plus 1, what we need is we have been given P divides a1 up till a k, a k plus 1. So let's consider now the integers up to k plus 1. And we want to prove P must divide any of these integers. So, in this case, we can see that now consider these integers as one integer because we have already said that P divide this. This is by assumption. And this is you can keep this as a separate. So, maybe you can consider this as P divide some C and D where C is A1 up till AK and D is AK plus 1. So, now here by this uh, by the last theorem or by this condition when n is equal to 2 whenever p divides a product of two integers so in that case this implies p divides c 
or p divides d so this means so from these uh, from this last theorem we can say that p divides a1 up till ak or p divides ak plus 1 so that means the result is whole so either p divides ak plus 1 and in this case this condition hold true and in this case again we see that if p divides a1 up till ak plus 1 so we can repeatedly say that p divides a1 up till ak minus 1 this term multiply by ak so again following the back step we get to the result so we say that hence the result is proved so whenever p divides the product of the integers p must divide ak for some k in second corollary it says that if p q1 q2 qn are all prime so here we have now considered both primes and p divides the product of the primes only p is also prime and qis are also prime then p must be equal to qk so in earlier theorem that was not the prime here to which the p is dividing so now as we followed the proof of the previous corollary now let us prove in this case so by corollary one we can say that whenever p divides q1 q2 up till qn this imply p must divide qk for some k such that k lies between 1 and n and because this is also a prime and this is also prime so we the only possibility by the definition it says if qk is a prime its only positive divisor is itself so that means whenever we say that p is greater than 1 and because both are prime p and qk both are prime so the only possibility is that p must be equal to qk and hence the result hold